Ed, I'll start with you on this last trading day of not only the month, but of the first quarter, what's been incredibly tumultuous. Um, what do you believe is already priced into the market at these levels? Well, we saw equity markets uh, melt down at a dizzying speed um, for most of March. Um, we did uh, bounce hard off a low. Um, I would say that <clears throat> If we're looking at a timeline where um, you know, it's going to take a period of time for us to get um, to the peak number of new cases in the United States, and you know, from that point, it's going to take a period of time to, um, to get this fully contained, and then a period of time to get back to uh, full production. So if we're at some semblance of normalcy um, midsummer or so, then I would say that um, the worst is probably behind us, and um, we've put in the vast majority of, uh, of the declines. Um, of course, we're monitoring for uh, economic tipping points and, and signs of economic contagion that could uh, lead us to um, you know, a more dire economic scenario. But I think if, we, if we're following the rough timeline that we talked about before, uh, then I think the 34% uh, percent drawdown that we've put in so far um, prices in that, that sort of scenario. I'm just curious, though, about when you say you're monitoring some of the economic data or potential for economic contagion. I mean, today we've got Goldman Sachs expecting, what, a 34% decline in U.S. GDP in Q2. And now they also talk about a, a very big double-digit rebound in Q3 potentially as well. But in general, there's already a lot of really um, – scary numbers out there for this quarter that we're going into. So what would that look like? What specific data points do you think will stand out the most and be most important? Well, yeah, like you said, the, the economic data is going to be shockingly bad, right? So we saw Goldman Sachs talk about um, negative 34 uh, percent quarterly annualized in, in Q2. Um, so we're going to see um, horrible economic data like, like we've never seen before. And um, the virus news is, um, is going to continue to get worse in, in the United States. I would, I would say one, um, one thing that is a positive sign, though, is that it does look like uh, the number of new cases are uh, peaking out and, and starting to decline in Italy. Right? So um, that could be an important uh, indicator that um, gives market participants confidence that Western economies are going to be able to uh, contain the virus. So um, I think that could be an important inflection point for markets. Lisa, I want to ask you about the prospects for recovery, because there's been a lot of talk about the shape of it. Is it going to be V-shaped, U-shaped, et cetera? I, I wonder if uh, as you're projecting the scenarios, you're considering the, what a white-collar recovery looks like versus a blue-collar recovery, because it seems like the, the damage and trauma of this is different depending on what sort of work you're doing. Uh, no, that's absolutely true. And, and I think, you know, our vision uh, for, you know, how this, this uh, economy recovers is that really beginning in June, we have a slow, gradual reopening of that blue-collar economy. You know, as you talked about, um, you know, that Main Street economy with restaurants and bars and, and nail salons and, um, and things of that nature, um, and that gradually, you know, you see a return um, to, uh, uh, you know, full activity coming in, in during the third quarter. Um, we at Morgan Stanley are basically just forecasting an annualized growth in the third quarter of about uh, flat, um, and that would essentially get us back to levels of activity that we saw, you know, during the first quarter. And, and you know, we are taking a very draconian view of, of the contraction that occurs in the second quarter. Uh, but we do think that while there is a certain amount of demand that gets destroyed uh, that a huge amount of demand actually does get delayed. Um, and while um, that blue-collar economy, you know, those meals you were going to order out at the restaurant, those don't get uh, restated, you know, certainly, um, you know, that haircut that, that maybe you didn't get uh, or, you know, the, the spa appointment or the physical therapy appointment that you didn't take, um, you know, those are the types of things that come right back um, because the pent-up demand is, is um, sitting there and it's huge. So... Um, you know, we do think that prospects for a V-shaped recovery 
as we get into the later part of summer are very good. Uh, Lisa, to that point, and I don't mean to always uh, ping pong you with what Mike Wilson writes at, at Morgan Stanley, but he has been pretty outspoken this week. Um, our base case is that the lows are in for this bear market for most stocks and current levels are buying points on a six to 12 month horizon. Would you put it that way? Uh, I do. I absolutely would. Obviously, you know, Mike and I work very closely together. And one of the things that, you know, we at Morgan Stanley have been, you know, very avid to point out is that most individual stocks, and, and we got to separate stocks from the S&P 500, most individual stocks have been in a bear market since 2018 and have not performed well. They have actually underperformed the index. Um, and so it is our belief that most stocks, uh, with this ultimate capitulative low last Monday, uh, put in their lows for this cycle. And that's why we're so avid about stock picking here uh, and believing that there's great things for patient long-term investors to own um, uh, with limited downside and, and more upside. 